uh, hello everyone uh, thanks a lot for joining us today welcome to talview's webinar on supercharging your hiring process with social recruiting techniques uh, before we start i would like to just uh, establish a few housekeeping rules it will be great if anyone who joins keeps yourself on mute and also if you have any queries in any doubts during the presentation you could uh key it in at the bottom right corner in your chat box and uh if you have any other difficulty too you could uh, ping us uh, in the chat box we'll also take take up all your queries uh, at the end of the discussion so yeah uh, I, i think we'll get started right so uh i'm mark samuel i'm a solutions expert at talview and uh, our, our today's speakers are uh, Sanjay Tomjoz my ceo and co-founder uh, he founded talview in 2012 and he had been driving the vision and strategy since the inception and he has worked with uh, mncs like uh, national instruments uh, lnt etc uh, he is an engineer from cochin university and uh, an mba from iit bombay and we also have uh, our guest speaker mr dishan kraj He's a vice president of HR at Swissray. Uh, he's a commerce graduate from IIM Bangalore, and he's an MBA in HR from Symbiosis Pune. He is currently heading talent acquisition uh, extensively at Swissray, and uh, he comes with uh, over a decade of experience in strategic resourcing and talent acquisition. Now, uh, uh, to give you a brief about Talview. Talview was founded 4 years ago in 2012 we work across industries with uh, uh you know fortune 500 most of our clientele uh, includes fortune 500 companies we had been optimizing their hiring process for the last 4 years and uh, our product portfolio now has uh, improved from just video assessments to uh, candidate engagement uh candidate interaction form and in-depth analytics on video interviews now uh i'll just give you a brief on what uh, our speakers are going to cover today they, they'll be defining they'll cover everything from defining social recruitment to uh, the benefits and the shankar uh, give you an extensive uh use case of how he has implemented social recruiting techniques uh, in various organizations especially swiss stay where he has worked now i'll just hand it over to uh, our speakers of today Thank you, Mark. Um, welcome, everyone, to the webinar. Uh, so, uh, what is uh, social recru- recruitment, or how do how do we define social recruitment? So, this is one of the core aspects uh, of recruitment today. This is this has become like a trend which uh, almost everyone is aware of. Uh, almost ninety percent people are using social recruitment. but i guess uh, based on our interaction with the industry we have found that probably around 40 to 50 percent people are able to say that okay yes uh, we did social recruitment or we tried some something in social recruitment and we got some good results out of it so this webinar is essentially uh, targeted at um, uh, people who 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 knows about uh, social recruitment who are uh, interested in implementing social recruitment have probably tried a thing or two already at their uh, workplace uh, but uh, maybe it, it was not that effective or you are looking to uh, looking forward to the best practices which will give you uh, a lot more uh, return on investment as far as uh, social recruitment is considered so i think uh, social recruitment can be defined as advertising open positions in creative ways on social media networks or channels to directly converse with an engaged prospective candidates and uh, like i said initially it's it's not a trend but uh, it it is a trend and not a process and it, it is as versatile as it can be uh, dishan uh, would you would you like to add your perspective on how you would define social recruitment based on your experience in the past sure 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 sir so the way i look at uh, social recruitment uh, first of all i i must say that uh, i feel that this is an area which is uh, still untapped uh, most of the times when we think of social media recruitment then the first thing that comes to our mind is uh, 
posting open positions and and uh, getting some applications. However, it is much more uh, beyond that. I, I think it's a tool that helps you to build strong recruiting organization by uh, first of course reduce dependency on your vendors for hiring, but it also helps you up to great extent uh, with your market mapping requirements. You know, most of the times uh, these days when you are setting up a new business. You want to find out what is the skill set availability, what sort of talent is available, which companies are doing similar business, and and social media gives you a great platform to conduct such market map mapping exercises uh, based on which you can uh, plan your strategic hiring more effectively. Thank you, uh, Dishan. Very true. So in in fact, uh, I think this slide uh, kind of sums up what uh, Dishan said. Social recruitment can can be many things and can be leveraged in many manners. So, right from enhancing your employer brand, showcasing the work culture of your organization, uh, building a network of uh, prospective candidates and influencers, engaging in conversations uh, with uh, candidates who are prospects or who are already a part of your hiring uh, workflow, it can it can also be used to do. Uh, uh, on uh, what is the need gap and uh, what is the need gap uh, based on what skills you are looking at also getting in touch with uh, new candidates as and when uh, you would like to directly reach out to someone so broadly uh, you can you can use uh, social network the way you use uh, probably uh, a job portal so link, linkedin is one of, one of the leading social network can be used to directly source candidates in a way you can use social networking to leverage referral hiring you and for many of us we also use social networking as the mobile aspect of our sourcing and recruitment so i think this broadly sums up uh, what uh, social recruitment uh, can be and how it can be used. so uh, again coming back to uh, the original uh, thought process of how we can implement social recruitment effectively Uh, so i think a recent survey suggested that almost 80 85% of workforce uh, wouldn't mind talking to a recruiter on social media they don't they don't mind people reaching out to them on a linkedin or a facebook or a twitter uh, but on the other hand despite the i would say the trend of social media catching up uh, almost 80% of 82% of recruiters believe that probably their social recruitment skill uh, is now not proficient enough so i think th- there is a gap in terms of the candidates are there expecting to uh, be uh, contacted they are expecting to engage with uh, prospective employers uh, future employers on social media on the other hand recruiters feel that probably they need to they need to know more to reach out to them they need to probably do better than what they are currently doing so in terms of uh, channels used by uh, recruiters you can see on the slide uh, in fact linkedin linkedin is something which uh, has been very prominent amongst recruiters almost 79% of recruiters use linkedin uh, to as a, as a social uh, recruitment channel uh, and followed by facebook twitter and many of them also use blogs so uh, dishank in, in your experience uh, oh, how, how, uh, how have you used uh, social media which which were the channels which you have used most and which which probably you can sh- uh, share some insights on what what has given you better returns also sure so purely talking about uh, the indian context uh, san i i feel that linkedin of course is uh, something which is more popular in the uh, indian context mm-hmm. um, however uh, in, in the western country if you look at then uh, twitter is um, and twitter and facebook both are, are also quite effective now the the challenge that um, at times we face um, is is also on your uh, company policy and guidelines not uh, many organizations are uh, yet open uh, towards usage of facebook and twitter linkedin being a more uh, professional uh, social networking site has uh, got uh, at least better acceptance rate within organizations so that i'm assuming could could be another factor why uh, linkedin is more popular over the other sites at least in india and mm-hmm. um, just adding on to the uh, advantages that we talked about of course it helps you right from employer branding to to sourcing and so on the other key aspect is um, which which i feel is is very important is uh, social media really brings you closer to your candidates 
I mean, if if you are interacting with somebody on LinkedIn or or Facebook or Twitter, you can really gauge a lot of information about them. You can find out what sort of blogs have they been involved in, what kind of people do they follow, and it gives you some insights on on your candidates, on who you are recruiting, and and I think it's it's a very unique uh, advantage that it provides. You know, otherwise in a formal setup. When you meet a candidate one on one, you may not always get to see the true picture, and okay. and platform helps you going beyond that. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, moving on, uh, so we we look at probably what are the what are the most basic activities which which are also the one some of the most important activities which you need to do uh, when you are. Uh, when you are starting with social recruiting or when you are trying to scale up your social recruiting so some of the aspects which uh, we could uh, see across companies who were able to successfully leverage social recruitment was all of them had a significant focus on having a unique employer brand the communication of uh, the right employer brand becomes very critical from uh, that perspective and the other aspect is uh, leveraging video so i think a lot of a lot of uh, recruiters have discussed that in terms of uh, the, the consumption of uh, content on social media probably uh, so video is the most effective manner so many people who have been trying to post content in different formats have always seen that video has given them better uh, uh, better traction or better response from the candidates uh, in terms of uh, the different types of content they have tried on social media uh, dishan do you have some experiences to share on these two aspects sure absolutely i think um, you have hit the nail on the head i mean uh, it it's very important to have your own uh, usp i look at uh, social media as a double edged sword while it can of course give you a lot of lot of mileage it it can really uh, create your brand visibility it also has the ability to dilute your brand if you are not using it effectively so this is my experience at least in, in, in last two organizations where we have used uh, social media very extensively i have always uh, you know believed that you should not do something as an organization just because your competitor is doing it you you yeah, should yeah. be very careful about what and how you want to showcase your your branding strategy must depict the true picture of your organization what you believe uh, as as the culture of the organization and you need to be careful while while being on social media platform because any wrong uh, messaging can go viral and can really dilute your uh, image understood understood and any any uh, observation in terms of the type of content which has generally found better acceptance in social media so i think we are more moving towards the uh, generation where we are we are dealing with more of millennials and mm-hmm. and one uh, key aspect about millennials of course is they do not want to go through too much of content and mm-hmm. video is uh you know of course uh, the most impactful way of uh, reaching out to millennials because you know these are the generations you know where uh, people are more uh, used to playing video games and and watching youtube okay right so if if you look at a uh, lot of organizations in, in the west of countries and even in india are are moving from job description to video job profile you know they don't want to read up things So I, I I completely agree with you that video is uh, certainly the most effective way of reaching out to the large audience. Great, great. So moving on, um, some of the other aspects which we identified amongst the, uh, these successful organizations. Uh, so many times I think even when you are starting small, uh, you don't you don't uh, probably get uh, give a lot of importance to um, having the right company profile. Uh, on on this social media platforms so i think uh, and at times we have also seen this uh, uh, disparity between uh, there are companies who maintain different uh, profile for uh, um, the career career of the comp- comp- career page of the company and there are companies who have um, 
uh, and so there will be basically two profiles one for the brand and one for the uh, career page so i think uh, this uh, so essentially uh, if you are if you are uh, you can't get to two different target audience at the same time so it it becomes kind of important for you to uh, ensure that uh, if you if you have a page where you are looking at uh, engaging prospective candidates then probably you you probably would want to have a separate page which will help you to engage candidates better uh one of the other aspect again is uh, i think continuous activity and sharing things which are uh, so probably interesting for the candidate in their domain in the probably things which are uh, generic but uh, probably uh, more relevant in terms of helping them uh, in a way uh, with their career with their learning and development all of those aspects have seen better acceptance and uh, see, uh, those companies have seen better traction this always companies were probably only posting job posts or only posting about uh, an event when uh, assignment there is a major event happening in the organization uh, dishank uh, if you can share your experience here sure so first of all i i really like what you said uh, at at the beginning of of the slide um, it is very important that you have a consistent messaging uh, be be it on your uh, career site or or your company website or on your linkedin page many a times uh, i have seen that the organizations of course when they are uh, creating a page on on linkedin and it's it's targeted completely on attracting talent and when you go to the website of the organization the information you have do not really go together in the direction and and that we we must avoid we we must have one unique uh, employer uh, branding proposition on whatever platform we are using and uh, while we are trying to attract uh, talent we we it it has to be give and take we have to share something interesting uh, which helps your followers it cannot be just what you want to share uh, to attract talent it also has to be something which helps the readers or followers to enhance their knowledge and you must update it regularly i mean it's it's not a one time effort i i look at social media as an sip it's a systematic investment plan which gives you returns on long term only if you keep investing systematically and regularly so i think uh, this is a quote from one of one of the famous bloggers in social recruitment uh, area one must identify follow share and contribute to growing relationship building rapport and winning the top talent to your organization i think this is exactly what probably dishank also shared uh, uh, just now with us uh, so now uh, to- talking about specific platforms so one of the most popular platforms in social recruitment as we already saw is linkedin so linkedin today has pro- around 30 million 31 million users in india and if you're looking at some of the other geographies in us there are more than 100 million people and uh, probably around 13% of this are millennials who are more active uh, when it comes to social media and some of the other uh, interesting facts which we could see that uh, see that was uh, 80% of linkedin members connect with companies uh, uh, where they are interested in so they follow companies uh, where they are probably interested in working with or they follow companies uh, who uh, where they have worked in the past so this kind of keeps them in, uh, so this kind of makes it a very important channel for companies to keep the talent engaged and uh, moving to uh, how typically uh, recruiters are finding candidates on linkedin i think when it comes to uh, job post i think specifying the post in 100 words uh, is something which is well accepted as a best practice of course almost all the top recruiters on linkedin um and if you if you uh, talk about specific features i think linkedin talent advantage is uh, uh, provides an exclusive suite of tools for recruiters but it's not necessary that uh, you need to spend on uh, uh, spend on the tool uh, you, uh, there are there are a lot of free resources which uh, linkedin is uh, anyway offering and uh, one of the other very effective way of uh, in- interacting with uh, people who are uh, uh, like minded or who are prospective candidates for you is uh, joining groups where a uh, lot of this conversations happen about job opportunities about uh, what that particular company is doing in a particular domain 
so i think a lot of interesting discussions happen and we, we can participate in domain specific or uh, company specific discussions i think that can add a lot of value and uh, as a recruiter i think uh, it always uh, also makes sense to build your company brand because at the end of the day the uh, candidate is joining the company so typically uh, sharing what gets gets posted on your company page also helps to keep the connections and the viewers uh, engaged with what the company is all about and how the company is doing uh dishank your thoughts on linkedin sure so so linkedin is something which um, i have used extensively in in last two organizations and uh, we have seen great roi um, if if i talk about uh, my my previous organization which was a large uh, banking organization then the return on investment was almost close to 10x um there there are of course um, certain ways uh, in in the uh, post jobs i think uh, the most effective way that i have uh, experienced is uh, going and joining specific groups and and you would be amazed to see the number of groups available on linkedin i mean you pick up a skill and and you would find specific groups relevant groups so always post in the relevant groups so that you get the maximum relevant profiles just by going ahead and posting randomly you may get a lot of uh, applications but you may not get a lot of relevant ones so i think as a best practice i would always advise joining specific groups and posting and and over and above what you said uh, that it's important that as a recruiter we we build employer brand i think it is also important that as a recruiter we have our own recruiter brand. and we always have to be very careful about uh, you know when you are posting first of all your own profile should be up to date because it is important that when candidates looking up to your posting and most probably would also look up to your profile then he she gets to know who you are as an individual so you also need to carry your own brand image understood understood uh, moving forward uh, the next platform obviously is uh, facebook which is um, uh, one of the largest user base across all the social media uh, platforms almost 1.3 billion uh, mo- mo- mobile active users who are spending on, on an average of uh, 20 minutes on facebook uh, and typically uh, recruiters are using facebook directory to search for users pages so this this acts as kind of a digital footprint for many users and i think uh, many recruiters are using that for basic profile check and a lot of those aspects uh, and i think one of the other interesting feature which facebook offers is you can post a job for free in facebook marketplace uh, with some basic information and i think uh, that uh, kind of helps to reach out to at least a certain set of talent who are more active on uh, this particular platform and uh, facebook also i think some of the larger companies have got very good uh, uh roi uh, in by advertising of uh, for uh, job posts and uh, career events uh, via facebook ad so uh, and the next one uh, obviously is uh, twitter so when it comes to twitter it's a social media it's it's around 320 uh, active uh, 320 million active users in total and uh, uh, If, as far as india is considered i think we are yet to see a lot of traction for twitter uh, from a recruitment perspective but i think um, in future twitter will become more and more relevant for recruiters in india as well uh, so one of the easiest way to recruit is by tweeting jobs uh, um, on uh, twitter apart from that you can also run a quick search on twitter you can find out the uh, uh, find find about people you can also search location industry or interest and find potential candidates for particular skill so i think uh, using hashtags uh, for hiring especially for some of the skills where people are more active on twitter like sales um, and uh, some some of the uh, i would say higher management roles are um, can be very effective uh, for uh, recruiters so in i think now we will uh, get to the part where where uh, uh we, we we would listen to dishank about his experience on uh, setting up social media recruiting uh, at uh, his previous organization uh dishank if you can please take us through the process you went through and how 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 uh, you went about doing 
all of this at uh, Sushri. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, sir. So before uh, I, I get into uh, details, I thought since we are talking about uh, social media, I think our discussion will be incomplete if we don't talk about uh, Eric Coleman. I mean, I, I'm not sure those of you who do not know who Eric Coleman is. Uh, Coleman is to social media what uh, Peter Drucker is to management. And uh, he, he is the author of uh, a very famous uh, book called uh, Social Nomics. Uh, so those of you who, who are interested in reading books, I would uh, suggest please do read that. He, he is also the author of uh, What Happens in Vegas Stays in YouTube. And so, so he has uh, come up with a very powerful quote, which, which I really find very inspiring. And, and that's we don't have a choice of uh, whether we do social media. The question is how well you do it. So if you look at it, it's quite powerful because, you know, as we have been talking so far, while social media comes with a lot of advantages, the key is to know really how you want to utilize it. And, and trust me, if you do not use social media effectively, then it can really go completely in the opposite direction and it, it has the capacity to dilute your brand image completely. So first, I, I, I would suggest one must keep this in mind before you plan to use uh, social media. Uh, I, I always uh, suggest that you need to start with basics. That you, when I say basics, I mean you must have your uh, company profile, which should be uh, updated. And it should not just be a one-time event or effort. You need to ensure that you keep updating it regularly, time to time, whenever there is any further updates. And before you even get into the mode of recruiting through social media, you must onboard your partners on the journey. When I say partners, I mean business. Because at the end of the day, whatever you are trying to do is for the organization. And as HR professionals, it is not possible for us to embark this journey alone. We, we need to have support from our business. We need to have our support. From, and, and I'll tell you why it is important. So if, if you look at the overall, uh, you know, whatever we have spoken, we, we said that you have to make it uh, you know, a knowledge-sharing platform. Now, as an HR, I'm not really sure up to what extent you can make it a knowledge-sharing platform. For, for example, you intend to target um, people with high analytical skill sets, and, and hence you go ahead and join a group uh, on, on analytics and LinkedIn, and you post a job. Now, you may not get uh, or, or you may not be able to fetch good results unless you already have followers uh, who, who are interested in your group. And to generate that interest, you must post something which is relevant to their domain. And you as HR professional, we as HR professional cannot come up with those blogs or articles or postings, and it must come from our business. And hence, it is important that your business sees value in what you're trying to do. And this is something that in, in both the organizations we, we started with, we, we first got buy-in from business. We, we went out to them. We told them this is what we intend to do. Here is where we would require your support. We need you to write blogs, exchange what you're doing in this area so that people add, uh, you know, people see some value add. And, and if you don't have that uh, support, then... Uh, I, I wish you all the best, but I'm sure that uh, you, you will have a difficult journey ahead. You, you must be active and visible, right? Uh, that's the key. As, as we said earlier during the discussion, that just going and posting jobs is, is not good enough. You, you need to ensure that you are present and visible even when you do not have probably uh, an open position. It's an investment, right? And, and you need to share your leadership value proposition. It's just not uh, employer uh, value proposition. And, and what I mean by saying that is um, these days when somebody is following you on uh, LinkedIn or, or a Facebook or a Twitter, and it's not just the company that they look at. They, they also go and see the people who are working with these organizations, right? If, if you invite a candidate today for an interview, very often candidates ask you questions around, okay, who's going to be the interviewer? If I get selected, who will I be working with? 
And then it is very important that the leaders of your organization have their profile, which depicts very clearly who they are and how can they add value to somebody's career. And unless and unle un until you have that level of clarity, it, it is very difficult for you to really attract talent. I mean, you, you may still succeed to get uh, applications, but I don't think you would be able to utilize uh, or, or you would be using the social media platform to the fullest unless you have these basics in place. The, the other advice uh, I have is you need to keep a futuristic approach. Most of the times you would see when you post a job, you, especially talking in the uh, Asian or, or Indian context, the number of applications you receive per open position would be very high. Now it is probably uh, you know, quite possible that out of 100 applications you receive, only four or five suit the need that you have. But it is also quite likely that there are other 10, 15 profiles which do not suit your current needs or current, but you may have something similar in future. You must have a way where you keep a database or, or a repository of such profiles for, for your future requirements. You must acknowledge such applications as well. So just don't look for applications for your current open positions. Have an eye also on, on the other future open positions that you may have. Build a strong database so that next time when you have an open position in those areas, you don't have to again go back and, and start the process from scratch. If you use it very effectively, and, and which is what we have done in, in, in Swiss Re, you can really build a very strong uh, database of your uh, prospective hires. And, and you can move away from a reactive hiring to a proactive hiring, which, which would certainly be very beneficial for your organization. The, the other uh, important aspect to understand is uh, when, when you're dealing with uh, candidates on social media, then you're not really interacting with uh, active job seekers. Most of the times uh, we, we saw in the stats that around 85% of these are passive job seekers. So though they might be open to have a discussion with you, they do not really have uh, necessity to look out for a job. And, and hence, you need to be very soft and mild in your approach right from the time you, you know, interact with them to understand. Ask for their profile. They may take time because they may not always have their CV ready since these are not active job seekers. So be a little soft. Don't go too aggressive. Even when it comes to interview, uh, don't expect them that you know, uh, in the next two, three days, they will be ready to take up an interview with you. You need to go slow. And, and what we have done to tackle uh, the challenge is uh, we have leveraged on the digital interview platform. right? So that gives the comfort and the flex flexibility to the candidates to take the interviews you know, at their own leisure. So, so the moment you have an interesting application which you've received, you can send a link, and the candidates can uh, take the interview whenever they are free from their own location and, and you can assess the video and then decide whether or not to proceed further with the candidate. So it works both for the employer and for the candidates because, uh, you know, as I said, these are passive job seekers. Don't expect them to you know, immediately send their CVs and be available for uh, interview. The other and most uh, crucial aspect is you need to ensure you know, uh, irrespective of whatever the outcome of the interview is. You must earn a brand ambassador in each candidate you interview. Many a times we conduct an interview and we do not go back to the candidate to close the loop. We do not tell them what happened in the interview. And, and that really, again, dilutes your uh, brand image, especially if you are interacting with candidates on the social media platform, one posting, you know, about uh, the interview experience, which is on the negative side, can really go viral and, and spread it across to many more prospective candidates. So it is very important that you treat the candidates with utmost professionalism. You close the loop with them, give them feedback, let them know how they can do better, and try and generate more referrals. You know, so it's, it's like a chain reaction. Once you have earned one brand ambassador, they will 
the, the message will go through word of mouth and, and you will have many more. So, so these are certain things that uh, I have personally uh, seen working quite well. I'm sure there must be many more uh, ideas and I, I think this is a topic which is ever evolving and, and there is no one formula which, which works. But at least these basic steps uh, will, will certainly help you get a good result. Very, very insightful, Dishank. Um, I think uh, there are a lot of aspects and probably we can, we, we can do a webinar on each of them separately. And, um, yeah. yeah, but I think the more important fa uh, aspect is of getting it right. And I think you have very, uh, you have given very valuable input, inputs from that perspective. So now, uh, so like Dishang mentioned, so once you have the uh, candidate applied to you, so now, now is the time where you have to make a, make an impression on the candidate because, like Dishang uh, highlighted, uh, the candidate is a passive job seeker, and you have to ensure that you give him a very, uh, uh, a very uh, memorable experience where it becomes uh, uh, very convenient for him to do the entire interview process and where he can uh, uh, he can essentially uh, look uh, probably not by not by um, investing a lot of time and effort like taking a leave and traveling all the way uh, way to your office he can still be part of the hiring process so that's where we, we have been able to help a lot of our clients uh, including Swissri uh, by providing our digital video interview platform where uh, we have a tool called asynchronous video interview where you can have predefined questions pertinent to different skills and candidates can uh, you can invite candidates uh, by triggering an email from from the tool and uh, you can have to provide a wider window of three days or five days or ten days depending upon uh, what is your requirement and the candidate can assign when they have uh, a few minutes of time uh, from their smartphone or tablet or any other uh, web-enabled device uh, can respond to uh, predefined questions in video uh, which will get recorded and will come back to you as a nice uh, holistic profile of the candidate with uh, insights on what kind of experience he had in the past, what kind of uh, uh, skills he has, uh, what are his career ambitions and uh, priorities. So it, it, you get a holistic overview of the candidate which helps you to uh, kind of uh, screen and uh, ensure that you you are probably uh, pursuing uh, the best matches out of the passive candidates whom you have attracted uh, using social media. Uh, some of the other aspects where we have been helping our clients uh, uh, is by uh, helping them to leverage technology to uh, scale up their uh, social recruitment. So uh, essentially, when you are reaching out to candidates on all these platforms where which are engagement driven. Um, ensuring that you are responding to each and every query uh, which is asked uh, across platforms. You are, you are ensuring, you ensuring that you are resolving any concerns or clarifications of questions that candidates have about your brand, your job opportunities, their applications in the past, probably they are waiting for results uh, for interviews or assessments they have taken up online or, or in your campus. So that's where we, we have a query management module which uh, acts as a ticketing system for you to uh, keep track of who, who all are asking queries, how many of them are being responded to, uh, how, what is the uh, satisfaction level from candidates uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, in the engagement you are doing with them on, uh, online. So I think query management tool helps you to do a lot of those aspects. And the other uh, particular tool which you are providing is the campaign management tool. So now we spoke about the importance of uh, uh, being uh, consistent in uh, your social media outreach. Uh, being uh, 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 kind of doubling down on what is generally working for you, and all of this uh, uh, again, uh, uh, when when you are trying to scale up, it it uh, becomes uh, critical for you to ensure that you can automate a lot of these aspects. You can uh, derive insights and analytics, which will help you to fine tune your social media recruitment strategy uh, uh, better. And that's where the campaign management tool, which Talview uh, provides, becomes very handy in terms of helping you to drive a lot of these activities. And uh, I also uh, wanted to share uh, uh, some of the benefits which uh, uh, Dishank had uh, shared in terms of what Swissri could uh, leverage out of uh, uh, using the Talview uh, video interview platform. So uh, they have been able to reduce uh, all, uh, the 
uh, man hours spent by interviewers during the initial screening by 66 percent which kind of uh, give that uh, i would say give that uh, bandwidth for uh, an organization to uh, reach out to lot more candidates and ensure that you, you know, the quality of hire increases by widening your candidate pool uh, almost 75 reduc- percent reduction in interview scheduling effort uh, by helping you to do a synchronous interviews at, and even uh, synchronous or live interactions on a digital interview platform which has the process flow and the automation built in which will help you to schedule and follow up interviews in the best possible way um, i think we have been uh, helping uh, many of our clients to uh, reduce the effort which again will help you to uh, re- uh, increase your candidate reach almost 25% uh, percent reduction in the time candidate spends in interview time which again becomes very critical when you are uh, engaging party candidates you cannot expect them to do a lot of investment in terms of uh, time and travel and all of that and i think uh making it convenient for the uh, candidate becomes very critical and uh, i think uh, more than 90% of the listeners uh, the line managers and candidate also gave uh, very positive feedback about talview uh, when it was implemented at swistry um, um almost two times uh, increase in conversion ratio uh, through robust screening i think that that also becomes critical uh, when you are looking at uh, um is improving the quality of hire and when you re- uh, when you are essentially reaching out to a lot more candidates and uh, other uh, other uh, benefits like time reduced in traveling and screening of for candidates and hiring managers uh, so i think this broadly covers what we have been able to do for uh, sixty and i uh, i think uh, this uh, this also kind of helps you to do uh, uh, social media recruiting in a more effective manner yeah i i would end with uh, Uh, this quote from uh, uh, Brian J, uh, uh, who had given us a feedback uh, based on the digital uh, video interview platform, and I, probably this is one of the factors which we wanted to drive home. So uh, uh, it was extremely convenient and enriching experience as I leave far away from office. He was a party candidate, and he was uh, he was the feedback he gave to the organizer or, or to the employer who was uh, assessing him uh, kind of. Uh, put i think everything into a perspective from a uh, from a digital video interview perspective yeah i think uh, with that uh, we come to the end of the presentation so um if you if you have any questions i think many of you have already conveyed that to mark uh, via chat if you have any more questions i think we have uh, we we have five more minutes where we can uh, address those questions uh th- thanks a lot uh, sanjay and shank for the uh, wonderful insights into social recruiting we have a few questions however uh, we have a question from sunanda and uh, she's asking us uh, she's telling us that she uh, she is always in a hurry to close a position in such scenario even active database does not help how will our social media uh, recruitment help in that scenario okay so i i will take that so as as uh, when we were discussing about uh, certain best practices um, if if you uh, recollect i talked about having a futuristic approach which which means don't go out uh, with with a posting only when you have an open position as in when you post at times you can post uh, even in advance keep a database of talent pool with you and that will help you to connect with the candidates immediately when you have an open position i mean we at swistry have uh, even gotten to the extent of creating talent club because many times you uh, face scenarios where you have a good candidate but you don't have an open position and and then the question is how do you keep the candidate engaged till the time you get an open position so various companies have various ways of doing it uh, to keep the candidates engaged and and my suggestion would be to maintain a database of of your prospective candidates and come up with effective ways of engaging uh with them basis the appetite of of your organization and and that will help you moving away from the reactive uh, way of hiring to proactive way of hiring thank you dikshank uh, th- thanks for the answer i hope uh, we have answered you sunanda and uh, we have another question uh, and uh, the question is how do how do we get more likes and followers something like a, is there a trick or is there a, something we can do to boost our likes and the number of likes and followers so i think here again uh, 
social media is a uh, platform where uh, your uh, traction and your uh, engagement has to be organic i don't think uh, by uh, employing any tricks uh, you can you can derive any tangible benefits probably uh, uh, initially you might want to uh, leverage your em- employees itself to increase uh, uh, the reach of, of of your social media uh, recruitment uh, uh, initiatives i think that's the best way to start almost uh, as recruiters we, we always have i think that's the first resource which we have to reach out to in terms of you know, building the um, follower base and building building the engagement on the platform and i think the other aspect is being consistent uh, in the effort so trying to uh, things which work for one particular uh, company it need not work for another company so i think you we need to keep experimenting about different approaches and uh, once you uh, find that something is working for you probably uh, doubling down uh, in terms of efforts and the investment on that particular uh, um, activity or that particular medium uh, will give better returns dishan would you like to add something sure sir i, I would say uh, of course uh, sanjay you have already covered most of the aspects the only thing i would like to add is let's put ourselves in in the shoes of the followers and and let's uh, let's uh, ask this question ourselves when would you want to follow somebody uh, be it an organization or be it an individual and the answer you would get would be most of the times you would want to follow somebody is only when you think you are being benefited out of it so you need to make it a learning platform you need to add value to their knowledge and if you do that and and you can do that by writing blogs or or updating case studies or or what's the latest in in, in that area if you do these you would see that you have genuine followers then you do not really have to put in any extra effort to to or you don't have to come up with any tips or tricks you will have those who are genuinely interested in following you and and i think all of us would want to have genuine followers thank you dishank uh, thank you for the uh, insight and uh, i have another question from sugant uh he's asking us to elaborate the effective use of facebook yeah this one would you like to answer that sure so facebook uh, of course uh, recruiting is always one area you know attracting talent uh, if you if you look at the number of users on facebook it is much more than linkedin so that certainly uh, an area where you can tap more than that uh, i i think where most of the organizations are using facebook is to screen candidates and conduct some background checks because it's a more open uh, platform linkedin is still a professional networking site facebook is not most of the times people are there even uh, making a lot of uh, personal uh, postings and blogs and there are a lot of organizations uh, you know which are uh, moving towards using facebook as an effective way of screening the candidates it it helps you understand the uh, mentality of the candidates what sort of uh, social background uh, do they belong whether it really fits the culture of your organization or not so it it really adds a very unique flavor to the uh, benefits great i think uh, i would like to just add that uh, probably in terms of uh, Uh, the activities uh, which are generally uh, uh, getting more traction in facebook we have seen across clients so uh, i think uh, facebook uh, is where people are n- not there for professional networking so probably uh, type of content content which uh, fits into that uh, perspective of the can- uh, the candidate or the user uh, who is probably looking for uh, uh something which is more entertainment oriented but probably you can link link the content in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, some way with your employer brand or with with uh, any initiative which you are uh, planning from a recruitment perspective i think that that uh, typically we have seen that uh, it gets better traction thank you sanju uh, uh thank you dishank uh for uh, the insights and uh, for answering all the questions uh i think we have run out of time now and uh, oh, uh thank you all for joining and if in case you have any further query of clarification you can reach out to me or mark samuel uh my email id is mark.samuel@talvi.com and yeah. uh, we'll take it from there